just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. So welcome to another coffee time. Well, this last week I put out a lot of videos and I got about 120 messages or comments and a whole bunch of emails about half that again. So I want to thank you for all of that. Most of them were very supportive, but I did get a number of suggestions. So I'll go over some of those things today. I was asked by several people, and I completely understand where they're coming from, but I was asked by several people to basically give some very deep, detailed information on three specific categories. Apartment location, like locator service. Uh, particularly for furnished for a month, two, three, four months, one was six months. I suggested going through booking.com or Airbnb because that's what I do. I mean, that's how I, and I also look on OLX. And if you don't know that website, OLX.com, you should learn it. It's, it's the uh, Craigslist or eBay of South America. I was asked about health insurance, about specific details of what kind of coverage and what's it going to cost. And, and uh, I was also asked about immigration laws, like what does it take to get a visa? Well, there's a, any number of visas, so let me address these one by one. The apartment locator, what you need is very specific. When you're going to come makes a big difference. I mean. Let's say I said, yeah, let me look that up for you. And I take a look, and then you come a month later. It's not going to be the same thing. Obviously, things change. That's not going to work out for that reason. And also, I actually live my life here. I've got things going on. And I don't have a business to relocate or set up or, you know, get paid to pursue, you know, hours and hours of research I'm not saying that can't be done. I'm not saying that, you know, maybe there's people out there doing it. If anybody watches this, let me know and I'll, I'll you know, throw your name out there. But at this point in time, I'm not really inclined to do that. I'm very busy with what I do. These videos alone take up a lot of my time. As far as the immigration goes, again, you know, it's like, which visa? <laughs> what are your circumstances? I mean, I certainly don't know. I don't have questionnaires. I, I am not an expert in these things. I am not qualified to give out legal advice, be it for immigration or anything else. Not in Colombia. I didn't do it in Ecuador. I gave it opinions, sometimes advice. I gave my experience, but I can't tell you what yours is going to be. They have immigration attorneys to do just that. Between the, you know, the legal issues, the extreme amount of time it would take, the fact that there's just way too many variables, I just can't give these things off the cuff. And I was actually asked, could I go to all the insurance companies and, and find out all the different costs? Well, there's, I think just in Armenia, there's seven or eight, just here in Armenia, major companies. I, I mean, the answer is no, and it's not that I'm trying to be rude, and it's not that I'm trying to be unhelpful. It's not what I do. I, you know, I understand when you're going to go to another country, you want to have good information. It would be really useful to have one person you could ask to gather everything together for you. But it just doesn't work that way. Now, is it possible I might consider some kind of consultancy? Uh, it, possibly. But right now, I, I just don't see it in my future. If you have anything in particular, any idea, feel free to send me off an email. But honestly, I just, I just don't see that happening. I don't want to get into a full-time business doing that and then give up on the things that I'm living here for. So, so I don't know. I mean, I, I'm open, but probably not. Furniture. I got a number of comments and questions on the furniture that I showed. Now, first of all, this furniture, I went used. Why did I go used? Because I'm poor. 
because I lost a lot of my clients um, my last year in Ecuador. More than half of my income is gone. Well, fortunately, living in Colombia, it's much easier on the pocketbook, but I can't come in here and just go down and you know choose all this really nice furniture and send it. So I had to take my time to pick and choose, but I'm very happy with that outcome. And whether I had the money or not, if I had to do it over again, I would do the same thing. I tried to do that in Cuenca, but finding good used furniture that gives you the value of being used, in other words, being able to buy it for half or less, it's, it's extremely rare to run into that. Here, you can buy things for a tenth of what they were new. So this um, living room set that I have, yeah, it's old. I mean, my friend Sandy in Cuenca wasn't very nice. She told me how outdated it was. Yeah, probably, but I shopped for something comfortable. That was my primary goal. I want something I can sit in because a lot of South American furniture is just hard. It's uncomfortable. It's built for show, not for snuggling up in and falling asleep during a football game. That, that's not their priority. And only at the highest echelons, like in Cuenca, you could buy Colonial. Very good, very comfortable furniture, but you're going to pay for it. And it's no different here in Colombia unless you go used. And because there's such a used market, that's what I decided to do. I chose used. Initially driven by poverty, but now if $10,000 dropped out of the sky, I wouldn't change this furniture. I'm very happy with it. And if I had to go look, I would do this again. Just like the previous things I discussed, can you find me furniture? How do I go about finding that? Well, no, I can't find you furniture because they could post it up today and it's sold in two days. I mean, it's a constant rotation. You have to look when you look. There was one that I, I loved it. I really wanted to go see it. And I sent off a message in the morning and they said, yeah, you can come see it. And so by the time I sent a message uh, before lunch that I was on my way, they had sold it. It's very disappointing. I mean, I don't blame them. There's no commitments here until the money's in hand. But you have to move it. If you find something you want, you have to move on. Now, I did go and look at a few different things. And there was one that it was a black Naugahyde thing. The design was nice, and it came with a coffee table and a footstool. When I went to look at it, it was considerably smaller than I had imagined in my mind. But when I sat on it, it was like sitting on a brick. It was really uncomfortable. And my new friends who uh, helped me negotiate on the bed, they went along on this, and they sat down on it, and they just gave me the... Yeah, well, I kind of already knew that. So the price was great, but it just wasn't for me. And I hate plastic furniture anyway. You can just come and buy new furniture. There's plenty of it. And I saw some nice ones. I went to the store and I looked at some uh, new furniture. Anything that's not very high-end that I saw was kind of crappy. It, you know, it'll fill the space, but it wasn't comfortable. A lot of hellacious colors. Colors are just atrocious. I'm not the biggest fan of the colors of what I've got, but it's okay. But some are just, you talk about gaudy with fringes and tassels everywhere. It's just, it's just not the thing. So you can buy new, but if you are going to, you might spend 2000 on a nice couch, 1000 on a nice armchair, and no different than in the U.S. or in Cuenca or spend $164 to fill your living room with nice stuff. These are wood-based, by the way, and they weigh a ton. I'm glad they were delivered. I have to bring up my GoFundMe and Patreon account because recently I've had some contributors to both. It is difficult for me to express how useful, how helpful that is. The entire topic, if any of you that have watched my videos over the past few years, 
No, it's, it's really an uncomfortable topic, but when I have people that appreciate the information they're getting and they contribute and donate to the channel, they want to see things keep coming, uh, maybe they have a particular question and they want it to be addressed, I appreciate that to no end. I mean, I truly, truly do. It's extremely helpful. So when you contribute on the GoFundMe or you contribute on the Patreon, it's not taken lightly. I, I take it very seriously and I'm very appreciative of it. I get a lot of suggestions and mostly they fall into the why don't you. Almost entirely they're well-meaning. That I'm limited by funds, I'm limited by when and where I can travel, I'm limited by equipment, which kind of goes back to funds. Everything that you're suggesting, you know, yeah, I wish I could do a lot of things, but I'm not a production company. I'm not a professional. I'm me. I don't have any help and assistance. I've got a tired old laptop, got video equipment that's a minimum three years old. So I do the best I can with what I have and the time that I have and still able to live a life. When I got the, why don't you do such and such? Well, I try. I'm doing my best, but there's a lot of limitations, time, equipment, money. So I listen to what's said, and if I can apply something and improve something, I certainly do it. My videos are far better now than they were a long time ago, but I'd never done it before. This is all new to me, and it's not full-time, so I, like I said, I do the best I can. And sometimes I make a change and I don't know until the video comes out. I can't just throw all that away. And so I'll put it up and maybe it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So I tweak it for the next time around. It's a process for me. And in another category of this, why, why don't you, sometimes the things they're talking about, they're actually planned. They're videos that I'm going to do. It's funny because I showed a video about buying the furniture and the next video or the video after I was going to show the furniture and put the prices on it. Well, in between that time, why don't you put the prices on those things? Well, I'm going to. It just it takes some time. And I didn't have everything set up to do it the first time around. It was That was the night that they brought the stuff in here. I didn't know where I was going to put it. it. You know, I need to set it up. You know, clean the boot marks off the floor from, from when they brought it in. So, you know, be patient. I'm getting to it. But don't stop suggesting it because maybe I hadn't thought of that. Now I, I do want to do an aside on pricing. I'm trying to include pricing. In Ecuador I had done so much on pricing early on that I just got away from it because you don't want to have pricing on every single video you do. I don't want to do it. It takes time and research and it's not the point of the videos at, at some point. But here I am in Armenia, in Colombia, and these videos are relatively new. I've done a few series in the past, but I'm trying to do more with prices um, as I did in Ecuador originally. But keep in mind that prices change. I go back and look at some videos for two and a half years ago, and that information really isn't that valid anymore. Things have changed. And so I'm conscious of that when I'm here. And when I talk about why didn't you use the price on the furniture? Because it was a one-time thing. I bought this furniture. It's not for sale now. So when people come and they're looking and they want to find a living room for $164, it's like mine. Chances are they're never going to see that again unless I decide to sell mine. So putting the prices in, in some ways, can be misleading, misunderstood. People might think, well, I want to go and buy just that, and it's not going to happen. I got comments on construction. My battery light's flashing, so I'm a little worried about that. Are the Chinese doing all of this, or are they building all these apartment buildings for the Chinese? No, this is not a country that's in bed with the Chinese. Uh, they have turned away project. This is a country that's doing fairly well. They don't need it. They're not at the beck and call of the Chinese or anyone else. And they've seen what's going on in Africa. They saw what's what happened next door in Ecuador. 
and they don't really want to get involved in, in that kind of thing. So, no, these are projects funded by themselves. Green spaces. Well, at some point they're going to build over these green spaces. No. If you've ever been through the northeast of the United States, every city you go to, Syracuse, Rochester, New York City with Central Park, you see massive amounts of green spaces, not just in parks, but everywhere along the streets. It's like that in Colombia, in many parts of Colombia, and Armenia is one of those parts, where from its inception, green spaces are built in. When I did the video on Parque de la Vida, that's a huge thing, kind of like Central Park with a lake right in the middle of the city. They're not going to take that away. People here are, they thrive on nature. It's important to them. They're not going to, they're not going to ruin it by paving it. Some of the building you can attribute to the massive earthquake that leveled Armenia in 1999 and they're still doing building. But primarily the reason you're seeing these apartment buildings is the coffee region is the number two tourist spot in all of Colombia. So there's a lot of tourists coming in and quite a few apartments are dedicated to having furnished utilities paid three six month rentals. Another thing to consider, Armenia is a very popular retirement place. Now, not for gringos, but for Colombians. So if you are in Bogota and you've got a great job and you've been working your tail off and it's time to retire, you might want to come move to Armenia. It's pretty common. And so they take that into account. The upside is there's a ton of apartments available and it keeps the prices low but the exchange rate on this one actually dropped to 277 I paid month of December already. So, you know, they're bargains. So don't look a gift horse in the mouth. So that's it for today to sum it up. Tons of comments, suggestions. Thank you. I don't want to be a no-sayer and say no, 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 no. But I do want to explain why, if I can't do something, why that is. So I don't want you to, you know, have any... Uh, heartburn over it. To the contributors, again, thank you. And just for watching, thank you. Last thing I'll say, of all the people that watch my videos, 70% are not subscribers. It's improved, but 70% are not subscribed. Please subscribe.